voluntary. Between 1520 and 1867, 12,500,000 people were moved from high UV to low UV areas in the transatlantic slave trade. Now, this had all sorts of invidious social consequences, but it also had deleterious health consequences to people. So what? We've been on the move. We're so clever, we can overcome all of these, these seeming biological impediments. Well, often we're unaware of the fact that we're living in environments in which our skin is inherently poorly adapted. Some of us with lightly pigmented skin live in high UV areas. Some of us with darkly pigmented skin live in low UV areas. These have tremendous consequences for our health. We have to, if we're lightly pigmented, be careful about the, the problems of skin cancer and destruction of folate in our bodies by lots of sun. Epidemiologists and doctors have been very good about telling us about protecting our skin. What they haven't been so good about instructing people is the problem of darkly pigmented people living in high latitude areas or working inside all the time because the problem there is just as severe but it is more sinister because vitamin D deficiency from a lack of ultraviolet B radiation is a major problem. Vitamin D deficiency creeps up on people and causes all sorts of health problems to their bones to their gradual decay of their immune systems or loss of immune function and probably some problems with their, their mood and health, their mental health. So we have in skin pigmentation one of these wonderful products of evolution that still has consequences for us today. And the social consequences, as we know, are incredibly profound. We live in a world where we, f where we have lightly and darkly pigmented people living next to one another, but often brought into proximity initially as a result of very invidious social interactions. So how can we overcome this? How can we begin to understand it? Evolution helps us. 200 years after Darwin's birthday, we have the first moderately pigmented president of the United States. How wonderful is that? This man is significant for a whole host of reasons, but we need to think about how he compares in terms of his pigmentation to other people on Earth. He, as one of many urban admixed populations, is very emblematic of a mixed parentage, mixed pigmentation, and he resembles very closely people with moderate levels of pigmentation who live in southern Africa or Southeast Asia. These people have a tremendous potential to tan, to develop more pigment in their skin as a result of exposure to sun. They also run the risk of vitamin D deficiency if they have desk jobs like that guy. So let's all wish for his, his great health and his awareness of his own skin pigmentation. Now, what is wonderful about the evolution of human skin pigmentation and the phenomenon of pigmentation is that it is the demonstration, the evidence of evolution by natural selection right on your body. When people ask you, what is the evidence for evolution? You don't have to think about some exotic examples or fossils. You just have to look at your skin. Darwin, I think, would have appreciated this. Even though he eschewed the importance of climate on the evolution of pigmentation during his own life, I think were he able to look at the evidence we have today, he would understand it, he would appreciate it, and most of all, he would teach it. You, you can teach it, you can touch it, you can understand it. Take it out of this room. Take your skin color and celebrate it. Spread the word. You have the evolution of the, the history of our species, part of it written in your skin 
understand it, appreciate it, celebrate it, go out. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it wonderful? You are the products of evolution. Thank you.